helping people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Canadian Certified Counselor and Award-Winning Psychotherapist. Hello, my name is Melissa Wagon, and I want to welcome you to today's show. I am so happy that you've decided to join us this morning. Today we're going to be talking about something very interesting and I know you guys will be excited about it. It is all about porn and the Christian family. So we'll be exploring this topic in great detail, so stay tuned. If you are joining us for the first time, I want to extend an extra special welcome to you and to encourage you to visit our website at elamcounselingministry.com. Elam is spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com, or give us a call at one 877 Five four four three five four six for more information about the show and our counseling services. For our regular listeners, I want to welcome you back and thank you so much for your dedication to the show and joining us again this week. And for you who join us each and every Monday morning, you will not be surprised who's with me in studio today. It is Michael Hart. He is an award-winning psychotherapist who is registered with the College of Registered Psychotherapists of Ontario, and he is the director of Elam Counseling Services, and he's going to join me in exploring this topic of porn and the Christian family with you this morning. So welcome, Michael. Thank you very much for that introduction, Melissa, and I'm very excited as well to explore this topic because this is one of those topics that affect a lot of Christian families. I see teenagers who come in to see me in my practice for help because they're addicted to pornography. I see couples who come in because a porn pornography is threatening the the very life of their relationship. And I see even older single men and women who are addicted to porn. And these are Christians that I'm talking about. And so I think it's one of those issues that is not talked about in a lot of Christian circles, but it is indeed a very big issue and a big problem. So today's topic about pornography, porn and the Christian family, is a very important topic for us to discuss because we are going to be looking at research, scientific research that that sheds insight and answers some of those questions that people have about pornography. And I think this is one of those interesting topics, because I think for us in Christian circles, sex in general is something we kind of keep behind closed doors and don't necessarily talk openly about. But I feel like pornography is even more so. It's it's behind the doors with the chair up under the doorknob, the blinds closed. And it's one of those things, as you say, we're not talking about a lot, but it's affecting people quite significantly. And it's one of those things, biblically, the word porn is not seen in the Bible. Yes. So sometimes it's trying to figure out where does this fit. Yes, and there's a lot of, that leads to a lot of confusion because it, it for a lot of people, they see it as a gray area, right? You're, some people say, well, I am not cheating on my partner. I am not hurting anyone. It's something that we do in the privacy of our home. And so what's wrong with that? And uh, whereas there is no specific reference to porn, to porn in the Bible, uh, naturally, expectedly, because it wasn't uh, something in biblical times. We didn't have the kind of media that we had have today in biblical times. So that's understandable that it's not in the Bible. Uh, but what I find is that because of that gray area, it creates a lot of problem. People enter into this realm and then do not have an understanding of the effect that it could have. And because it's one of those gray areas I have said before, uh, for a lot of people, I'm not saying for everyone, some people are very black and white on this issue, but there are other people who don't necessarily voice their opinions in in Bible studies and in Christian circles because they know that they will be condemned. But I see a lot of those people in my office that are saying, what's wrong with it? This is, we're not hurting anyone. What's wrong? So today we are going to be looking at the subject of pornography and talking about scientific research that sheds some light onto some of, on some of the problems that could develop as a result of porn use. So before we explore this topic, much further. I'm wondering if you can remind listeners about an event that we have coming up 
Um, it's the healing retreat that's coming up in June. The dates are June 8th to the 10th. It's a weekend and it's going to be in Lanark County at Providence Point. And Michael, you just wanted to say a few words before we got into today's show about that yes. to rely, remind listeners about how they can get their name on the list and what they can expect from that weekend. Well, let me say, first of all, that, that Providence Point is one of the region's best kept secrets. It's a very scenic and beautiful place uh, underwater on the lake and the facilities are excellent the food is excellent and it's a perfect getaway towering trees and just a scenic uh, a scenic peaceful place for you to get away and focus on god and uh focus on the things in your life that you're trying to change. And so we have chosen that venue for our retreat and we have had all of our retreats there so far and people have always come away with a sense of being refreshed and renewed. So if you have not yet registered for this retreat and there are there is something in your life that you're trying to get over, maybe it's a past hurt, maybe it's an addiction. We're talking about pornography today. For, for a lot of people, porn has become an addiction. Maybe, maybe it is some other kind of addiction. Maybe it's a troubled relationship. Maybe it's someone that you're you have been trying to forgive, but you just can't bring yourself because the pain is just too deep. Maybe you're realizing that there is a generational curse on your family and you're trying to to not repeat the cycles but you're struggling uh, regardless of what it is this retreat that we'll be having on the the 8th to the 10th of June is an excellent opportunity to come and to find healing. We said healing, but we're not talking about just physical healing. We're talking about emotional healing. And yes, physical healing is often a byproduct when you are you have dealt with thing emotionally, things emotionally and spiritually. And so if you have not yet registered, there there are just three spots remaining. And uh, as I said, we are not taking a lot of people to this retreat, so it will be a time where you'll be able to fo- we'll be able to focus on the needs that you have. So if you have not yet registered, give us a call at at one eight seven seven five four four three five four six, or go to our website at elmcounselingministry.com. So, Michael, we're going to get into the meat of today's show now. So for those of you who may just join us today, we're talking about porn and the Christian family. I'm wondering before we get too far into this, if you can talk a little bit about the prevalence of porn today and also how is today's porn different than the porn of yesteryear? I'm yes. picturing those old films of like finding the the paper bag with the, the, nudie, the nudie magazine under someone's bed as some people's frame of reference, but porn has changed quite a bit. Yes. So if we think about it just from that last part of what you said about finding those magazines under your your father's bed, a lot of uh, men that I see in my practice, that was their first introduction to porn. They discovered dad's magazine under the mattress or in the closet and they 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 started becoming interested in viewing nudity well things have changed a lot and i think if we were to draw a parallel between today and and how things were uh 20 30 years ago it would be like the 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 magazines were was owned the magazines were owned by the 10 year old in the house and the father is discovering the child's magazine. That is how, how things have turned around because the younger people today, they are the ones who understand the internet. They are the ones who, who know how to find things online, generally speaking. So a lot of times, uh, by the time uh, someone reaches the age 20 today, statistics show that the average young man have viewed 10 years of pornography. Boys are starting as young as 10, and they, by, by that time, they have become, a lot of them have become addicted and have experienced structural brain changes as a result of excess, excess dopamine. And because of this, it's affecting many other areas of their lives. So what other areas is it affecting? 
So one of the things that we know from any kind of addiction is that it affects the, the reward center of the brain. And when that is affected, things like delayed gratification becomes very hard to do. So most addicts, they will know that they, they have to do certain things to plan for the future. For example, they have to get an education, they have to, to, to study. But because that center of the brain is bombarded by dopamine over and over, the pleasure center of the brain, what ends up happening is that they live for the immediate and they cannot, they, they, it's as if they become incapable of doing anything that's long term. So we find that, um, that many of these young men who have had 10 years of porn by age 20, they, it's very difficult for them to focus on higher studies. And a lot of them will drop out of of, of their, their course of study. It's very hard for them to focus on a career and they exhibit some symptoms that are, are mistaken for ADHD, OCD, and depression. And a lot of times these symptoms are secondary. The primary cause is the addiction to pornography. But many mental health specialists misdiag misdiagnose these young men as having ADHD or OCD or, or depression. But what is really happening is that they have viewed so much porn that everything in life becomes boring compared to the images that they see online. So there is no drive to, to do anything else but to watch porn. So as a result, they become depressed, they become demotivated, and they, they, they have a lack of uh, a, 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 an inability to concentrate. And uh, what looks like ADHD, it's not ADHD in a lot of cases. It is porn addiction. So you talked about some of the mood um, effects and the personality effects through watching all this. Do pe do men, as because that's who we're talking about right now, ever experience physical symptoms like when they're having a sexual relationship with a real person? Yes. Do you see consequences as it? in that, those areas as well sometimes? That, that's such a good question, Melissa. What we are discovering now is that a lot of young men in their mid-twenties and sometimes younger, they cannot function in a relationship with, with a real woman. And so they, their brain has been wired to, to, to view sex as something that is done online. So what brings excitement for them is the clicking of the mouse, the watching of a computer screen, seeing images online. So when it comes to real intimacy, where there needs to be physical touching and being with a person and talking with a person who responds to you in real time, the brain doesn't send those signals as sexually exciting. So a lot of these men are, are having erectile dysfunction and it's becoming a big problem. A lot of men, young men are giving up porn because of this realization. And so it it, the effect of pornography, it's even more damaging than, than the, the, the viewing of magazine 20, 30 years ago. If you've just joined us, you're listening to the Life Transformation Radio Show. Today, we're talking about porn and the Christian family. If you've missed the first half of today's show, we encourage you to listen to it on our website at elamcounselingministry.com. Elam is spelled E L I M counseling with two L's ministry.com or you can always call us at one 544 3546 and we'd be happy to forward on a copy of today's show to you. So Michael you were just talking about the effects of pornography specifically related to young men and I think for many people when we think about pornography and pornography addiction and its effects we often have the picture of the young man in mind. But you also wanted to talk a little bit about how pornography can affect us in our relationships yes. and for us as couples. Right. So what kind of studies have been done in these areas? There are new and very uh, informative uh, studies that are coming out that is shedding light on uh, the effects that porn has on relationship. In one study that was published in the Archives of Sexual Behavior 2011, and this study was done by Amanda Maddox and her colleague, what they found after studying men and women between the ages of 18 to 34 and observing uh, 
what's happening in their romantic relationship. They found that couples or those that, that had viewed pornography in this age group were more likely to be unfaithful to their partners, 50% more likely to be unfaithful to their partners than the group that had not viewed pornography. So there should be no surprise in that. The research is is just showing uh, what we would expect because a lot of pornography uh, glamorizes cheating, glamorizes multiple partners, glamorizes uh, novelty having sex with different people and not just in a, in, a, in a relationship with one person. So it's not surprising that, for, that in this research it's showing that for those who view porn, they're 50% more likely to be, to be unfaithful than for, for those in, the, in this age group of 18 to 34 who did not view porn. And so within this study, did they look at you, what happens though when you view it as a, as a couple? Do, do, do the statistics still apply when we're viewing it together or was it just when we're kind of both in our separate areas? Yes, so the studies also showed that even for people who watched it with their partners, they were still more likely to be unfaithful than for people who watched it who didn't watch it at all. Uh, okay, so a lot of people say, well, we will spice up our love life with this. And and uh, the, while the studies show that there were some increase in sexual satisfaction in those in those who watched it together as partners, it also showed that they, the, the incidence of unfaithfulness also increased. And, and from reading that study with you too, even though... They were slightly more satisfied. It was more satisfied compared to that person watching it alone. Right. But those people who didn't watch it at all were more satisfied than those two other groups right. entirely. Yes. So, But you said something interesting there, and I'm wondering what advice or tips you'd give to people. Is Oftentimes, I think people may bring this into their bedrooms at the advice of someone to, that gives you that suggestion. Just spice it up. You, right. just, you've been married for however many years. Things may be getting stagnant and whatever. You just are trying to bring some spice to the bedroom. Right. What kind of advice would you bring to them then um, to either add some spice or just sort of what a cautionary tale from things you've seen in your practice where people have gone in with good intentions to spice things up, but maybe the effects aren't what they expect? I think one of the things that we need to keep in mind, Melissa, is that there are studies that have been done that shown that, that shows that of all the things that are addictive online, porn is the most addictive of everything. So it's a, it's a big risk. Well, I'm not saying that everyone who watches porn becomes addictive or not everyone who watches porn with their partner ends up cheating. There is a risk. And if you are, po- if you are, you're prone to addiction it's a big risk to take to 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 go that route to spice up your relationship because you could end up with a bigger problem than just lack of sex you could end up with inf- infidelity and you could also end up being being addicted so i think in terms of uh enhancing your your relationship your sexual relationship intimacy on other level is a plays a big role in that, so it's not just what happens in the bedroom; it's what happens outside of the bedroom. It's how you speak to each other. It's how you care for each other. It's it's knowing deep uh, personal things about each other, talking on a deep deep level. I think that a lot of Christians today have difficulty in their relationship because they are. They're like ships passing in the night. They live in the same house, but they're not really intimate in other sense. And so it's not surprising that if you're not open and intimate with your partner, then when it comes to the ultimate act of intimacy, you will have problems as well. I think we we know uh, 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 other advice that has been given about having date nights and so forth. But I think it's possible to have the date night and still not be intimate. If it's just something that you do once a month, you might find that it doesn't work. I think dating and 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 dating your partner has to be something that you do every day. You spend time, you find out more. When you were dating it 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 was not just about going to special places. 
It was about spending time with each other. And I think you can date each other inside your home by spending that inside your homes by spending that time to have intimate, deep conversation and really connect with each other, not just being together, but connecting on a deep level. And so if someone's listening and maybe they have gotten into this loop or this pattern of watching porn online, whether it's by themselves or with their partner, and they're hearing you talk and describe some of the ill effects from it, and they want to start breaking free of that and to lessen its impact in their life. How can they begin to start making those changes? Because as you said, this often affects as much like any type of addiction. And as we know from other shows, breaking addictions is not necessarily like flipping off a switch. Right, right, yes. So how do we begin to break those patterns within our lives? Right, so I think uh, one of the first thing things that we need to realize is that porn use and porn addiction is not really the problem in many of these cases. Porn is like a drug. It's like a, a band-aid that is covering a wound. And so it's important that if you find yourself addicted to porn or anything for that matter, that you don't just focus on the addiction. Many addicts who come in to see us are addicted because they're dealing with things like abandonment, they're dealing with neglect, or they're dealing with unresolved trauma. So I think if you are listening to my voice today and you realize that you're having you're 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 addicted to whatever it's pornography or some substance, it's important to to sit with someone who can help you uncover what's the, what the real problem is because a lot of times people turn to pornography and other means of escape because they're trying to silence the pain and so for a lot of people facing that pain can be scary so i'm wondering if you if you could in some way share some of those things you've seen in your own practice where people have taken that risk and started to expose those wounds and have been freed from something like this and the effects on the relationship after. Because sometimes when you're in it, you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You just see the walls closing in around you. Yes, yes, yes. And so if someone's stuck in that closed box room and they can't see the light yet, what kind of things could be changed if they start to reach out for help? One of the... the, the most encouraging thing that I heard uh, in in my practice in uh, recently was one man who came in and after going through what I talked about earlier dealing with the underlying wound and he said my my daughters said that they like this new version of me even my neighbors are seeing the difference in me my wife is, is saying that she's thrilled because of the person that they have become. She said, you're not the same person. You're a different person. So it was just not the act, that, that, that just not the fact that he stopped viewing porn, because I think it is possible that a lot of people will go through this, uh, you know, uh, blocking the viewing of the computer. But it's, if, if you're just dealing with that alone, you become like a dr- what we call a dry drunk in, in, in some term, where you are not drinking but you're still exhibiting all the qualities of someone who is a drunkard. And so it's possible that you could stop doing porn because you will yourself to do it. But those underlying things are still there. And so I think when you really work on those things under the surface, what will end up happening is that it will start to reflect in other areas of your life and people will notice the difference. People will notice sometimes that you're less prone to, to explosive outbursts. People will notice that you seem calmer, you're, you're more at peace and you're more pleasant to be around. And a lot of times, too, it it affects even productivity. A lot of people have said, I am so much more productive at work now as a result of me taking the steps to, to, to free myself of this addiction to pornography. This may sound like a weird question, but when you describe a story like that and the effects are so huge, I'm just wondering if someone out there may be listening and saying, but they're different than me, or they must be special, or they must be stronger. 
the people you treat, though special in God's, there's nothing unique about them. Right. Am I not yes, incorrect? Yes, you're, you're correct. And let me say that these are people who, a lot of time, are believers who have struggled for many years, mm-hmm. have, have tried many ways of stopping porn, have, you know, had accountability partners and things like that to help them stop, and they just could not stop because the underlying root causes were not dealt with. I think... The, 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 the people that I see who are most successful in overcoming this addiction are people who are sincere, who they come in and they said, I'm willing to do anything to overcome this addiction because I realize the, the effect it's having on me and my family. There are others who have come in because they have been caught and because their spouse gave them the ultimatum that unless you go in for help, then this relationship is over. Th- those category, oftentimes, they are not yet at the place where they're ready to be vulnerable and to open up and to allow God to deal with those those painful places in their lives that they they have been afraid to go into because it's it, because it's it's just too much too much hurt has been suffered. And so, for people who who come in and they say. I am willing to look at my pain. I am willing to talk about the the abandonment by my father or the, ne- the, the neglect by my mother or the abuse by a father or mother that they have never spoke with to anyone for years. It is those people that have the breakthrough. And yes, Melissa, these people, they are not more special than anyone else. They are just people who a lot of times have hit rock bottom. And, and because of this, they are ready to do what it takes to, to, to heal. Thank you so much for explaining that, Michael. Any last thoughts or words um, for people who may be listening today? So let me say this, that uh, this uh, subject that we have today is a lot more common in our churches than, than we might think. And uh, you are not the only one. Maybe you're listening to my voice today and you're feeling a sense of shame and you're feeling that, you know, if you should come in, I'm going to look at you some weird way because you, I might see you as a hypocrite or so forth. Let me say that that's the furthest thing from the truth because I see all levels of Christians from the top leadership right down to the person who who is in the back bench who, that are affected by this. I see men and women who are affected and and various age group. So if you have listened to this show today and you realize that uh, pornography has become an issue in your life or in your relationship, do not hesitate to give us a call and to get the help that you need. We can be contacted at one 844 or you can go to our website at elamcounselingministry.com. I'd also like to remind you that if you're struggling this retreat that we're having on June 8 to 10 might be a good opportunity for you to take the time to go deep into your source of pain and to to, to find the healing that you need. We just have a few spots remaining, so if you'd like to register for the healing retreat, uh, go to our website at elimcounselingministry.com. Elim is spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com. And so until next time, this is your host, Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services. And Melissa Waggett. Praying together that God would bless you in all your relationships and to keep you sound in mind and pure in heart. <laughs>